to our our final video, I think, at least for now, of the Praxis 0061 test on geometry. This is our sixth video in the series, and I we might make some more uh, from other practice, but, but I feel like at this point, after these six videos, we'll have a, a full range of all the questions that kind of pop up in the geometry category of the of the exam. So we're going to have a, a mix of types of questions here, and we're going to start with this one. Um, here we have a comparison of, of circles and rectangles, so it's a fun question, where the interior decorator wants to replace a rectangular table that measures 3 feet by 4.5 feet. So, so 3 feet by 4.5 feet, okay, and with a circular table that has a diameter of 4 feet. Okay, so the diameter is 4 feet. Approximately how much less area will the circular table require as compared to the area of the square table? So let's just, let's figure this out. And I, I think maybe this is an error here. Um, it's not a square table, it's a rectangular table. So they should be careful with that. Um, okay, so anyway, we have a rectangular table, which is 3 by 4.5. So work that out as it's you do 3 times 4 is 12, and, well, then what's left over? Well, half of, half of, another half, right? So, it's 13. Let me, let me say that again. I, I didn't say that very well. So, 3, 13 and a half. So, 3 times 4.5, sorry. That's 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 times a half is 1.5. So, that's 13 and 1 half. That's the area of this, of this shape right here. But the circle, of course, is based on the idea of the, the pi times diameter or over 2, right, squared, or pi am pi ameter, <laughs> pi times radius squared. So, here the radius is 2, so the area now is 4 pi, and 4 times pi, if you're estimating that, um, you can estimate as 12.566376, whatever, so we want to subtract 13, um, 12.566, we'll say, from 13.5. So 13.5 minus, and I'll I have a calculator, so why not enter all of this? 0.566, So it's about a 0.93 savings, right? Um, th this table will actually take up less material, and will cover excuse me, this, this table will, will hold, take up more space, right, it, it, than the rectangular, less space, than, oh boy. Whew, okay, let me, let me step back and say that again. And it's, it's asking us how much less area will the circular table, circular table require as compared to the area of the, of the square table. So this, like I said before, takes up less space than the rectangular table. It takes up 0.93 less. All right, so next we have, okay, so here, it says in the figure, let me let me draw this figure, um, we have the circle circumscribed about the right triangle ABC. So we have a we have a, a circle problem here with a with a, a, a triangle inside. I think this will definitely pop up. So here's our circle, and we have a triangle, right? Here, A, B, C. And let me label those points in blue. Why not? I like blue. Um, a, B, C. Okay. And we're given that this is a right angle. All right, this is a right triangle. It shows the right angle. So that so so triangle A, B, C. The circle has a radius of 4.5 centimeters. What is the length of the hypotenuse A, C of right triangle A, B, C? Okay. So so it looks like. AC goes through the center, but they don't give you that. So that's the only tricky part. Um, the radius um, is 4.5 centimeters. So if AC is the diameter, then AC will equal a, equal 9 centimeters of the diameter. And here, actually, AC is a diameter, and here's the reason why. Um, we have this right angle right here. This is an inscribed angle. right? It's an angle on the circle. And what do we know about what do we know about that? Well, we know that the arc, right, is going to be twice as long. So the inscribed angle in a circle is half 
is half the the size of the the arc, the subtended arc. So this arc is 180 degrees. And what does that mean? That means that this line right here, this cord is a diameter. So this this angle establishes that that this line has to be a diameter, which is really helpful. And so we know that AC equals equals nine centimeters. And it, and if you didn't have that, it might be a little bit trickier. You'd you'd want to you want to find other ways of just verifying that as a diameter. And actually, at first, when I when I first saw this, I, I couldn't believe how easy it was. It's just that you have to establish that that we do have a diameter. Because if you don't, uh, you can't you can't just use these rules. It's not it's not so easy. So let me just say it one more time. The <laughs> Uh, the measure of an ascribed angle, it is it's it's half the degree measure of its intercepted arc, right? So this this inscribed angle, oops, this inscribed angle right here, is half the measure of the inscribed arc, right there, and that's that's very helpful to us. And um, anyway, so so once we know that, um, the the degree measure of arc AC is is 180. Um, the chord AC, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Um, that's the diameter. So again, this this cord right here, it's subtended by the inscribed angle, so which is which is 90 degrees. So it's a so it's a, a diameter. And I think that always works. Well, I have to check, but I'm pretty sure that works. All right. So in the figure shown above, uh, AB is parallel to, to DE, and we want to know which of the which of the following theorems would be most likely to help prove that these two triangles are similar. So all of these theorems listed here are useful in proving the two triangles are similar. But here they give us these two lines, and these are parallel in the picture. And they draw these intercepting transversals. Okay, and they label the points, right? We have, they write right here, this is A, and this is C, and this is B, and down here we have D and E. Okay. So AB is parallel to DE. These two lines are parallel. And we want to prove that ABC is congruent to CDE. So ABC is this little triangle right here. And CDE is this triangle right here. And we want to prove they're similar. Well, corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. Well, that's very useful, except we're not given any lengths here in this diagram at all, so we can't use that one. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then, then any pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. Yes, that, that's going to be useful because we are given two transversals, right? one, two, and we have those alternate interior angles. Here's one, here's the other little angle, here's one, and then here's one. So we would have, the, we would have enough angles, right? If you have two angles and and two corresponding triangles, two congruent, two corresponding angles that are congruent, then you've got two similar triangles because these third angles have to be congruent as well. If you think about it, right, if I have one triangle right here and I know this is 60 degrees and this is 30, let's say 40, sorry, then this angle, what does it have to be? Well, it has to be 80 because this triangle has to add up to 180. So if I have another triangle with a 60 here and a 40 there, this angle has to also be 80, right? There's, so you only need two angles to prove that two triangles are similar. So this one works. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two corresponding angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. Yes, yeah, so we're going to use that because the, the transversals give us that. So these two are connected, and the answer would be um, 2 and 3. And I think we have one more. Maybe two more. Let's see, in the figure, lines L and, and M are parallel. So let me draw this out. Lines L and M are parallel, and oops, <laughs> what is the me measure of angle A? So here we have a very similar type of problem because we've got two parallel lines. I'm going to draw them. There we go. Two parallel lines, and we have a transversal. They don't. They're not saying it, but that's what this is right. We have two parallel lines cut by by this line right here, and that's the transversal. And they label angle A right here, and they. They label, they label lines L and M, and they say that this angle right here is 2x plus 65, 
and this angle down here is 3x plus 35. So how do we do this? Well, well, these two vertical angles are equal, which is useful. And this angle is congruent to this angle right here, right? which is the idea if this transversal cuts these two parallel lines, then angle A and this angle are equal. And then these two angles are equal because they're vertical angles. So, so that also means what? If 2x plus 65 is equal to A, and A is equal to, let's call this B, and B is equal to 3x plus 35, they're all equal to each other. So 2x plus 65 equals 3x plus 35. We could solve for x. So maybe I'll take 35 from both sides and 2x from both sides, right? And I'll get, well, what is what is 65 minus 35? Um, <laughs> brain, my brain is freezing right now. 30, right? Sorry. Um, so x is equal to 30. And, and that's, we're not done yet because to find one of these angles, you need to plug this in. To either formula, it doesn't matter. I'm going to choose the first one. So 2 times 30 plus 65. That's the angle measure, not just x. So that's 60 plus 65, which equals 125. And that's what this angle equals right here. So that's also what a has to equal. And b as well, and this angle down here. So there we're just using the idea of having transversal lines. And that's it. All right, thanks.